Hi everyone and welcome to the brand new CallFX YouTube channel. My name is Nikolai Parlock and in this channel I discuss software development in general with a particular focus on the JVM and on Java. Today is a special day though because we're having a Java 9 welcome party! Java 9 is out today and if you are following me on Twitter or are reading my blog you already know what I think about it. So to kick off this YouTube channel I decided to ask other members of the Java community what they think about the new release. Without further ado, let's meet the panel. Hi, I'm Simon Maple, the Director of Developer Advocacy at Zero Turnaround. Hi there, I'm Stephen Colborn, uh, Engineering Lead at Open Gamma and uh, creator of the Joda projects. Hi, my name is Christian Stein and I'm a member of the JUnit 5 core team. Hi, I'm Nikolai. I'm a Java developer, author and trainer at CodeFX. Hi, I'm Trisha. I'm a developer advocate for JetBrains. Hi, I'm Chris Engelbert. Um, I'm working for Hazelcast as the manager of developer relations. Hi, my name is Sander Mack and I'm a fellow and software architect at Lumnus in the Netherlands and author of the O'Reilly book Java 9 Modularity. Yeah, my name is uh, Jens Schauder, um, software developer working with the Spring Data team of uh, Pivotal. Hi, I'm Monica Beckwith. I'm a managed runtime performance person. I have a consultancy called CodeCorum LLC. Hello, my name is Raphael. Uh, I'm an open source author of libraries like ByteBuddy. I'm also working with Makito, and other than that, I'm a consultant here in Oslo. My name is Wayne Beaton. I'm the director of open source projects at the Eclipse Foundation. I represent the approximate 300 open source projects hosted by the Eclipse Foundation that cover all sorts of technology areas. Hello, my name is Simon Ritter, and I work as the deputy CTO at Azure Systems. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for being part of this video. If you're interested to learn more about these Java experts or the projects they mention, check out the description box, which is full of useful links. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my other videos. I asked each of my guests the same questions. What is your favorite Java 9 feature? What impact might Java 9 have on your project? What impact might Java 9 have on the wider community? And what are some good sources to learn on the new release? We'll go through these questions one by one, and I can't wait to hear the answers. We'll end with a round of applause for the JDK team. With all of that settled, let's get it on! Java 9 is packed with features, even beyond the module system. Here are the panel's favorites. For me, the features which make Java 9 interesting are the API and language changes, the changes that have been made to the Streams API, um, the changes that have been made to uh, the factory methods, the initializers of collections. It's all these little uh, changes to the API which make Java easier and nicer to develop with, uh, like you know the new, the new process handling API. These are the pieces of Java 9 which I think are most interesting. So besides the new module system in Java 9, I'm also looking forward to our private methods on interfaces. Uh, we've, been added, we've been able to add static methods and default methods in Java 8, but private methods will help additionally with our design features. Uh, plus also uh, collection factories. So you'll also be able to do list.of, set.of, and map.of, which will be great for shortening our code. A feature I'm looking forward to are the collection factory methods. The Java 9 feature I'm looking forward to the most is strong encapsulation. The number of times I have thought, damn, I wish I wouldn't have to make this type public, but there's just no other choice. Now there's another choice. I can just make them public and not export the package. I think I will use that a lot. I'm really looking forward to that. I think the Java 9 feature I'm going to use the most is the factory methods for collections. This might seem like a really small change to the language, but it's just going to make my life a lot easier for the sorts of code that I write all the time. I think most Mostly I'm looking forward to the stack walking API because that is really interesting. Um, so far you had to either create an exception to get the stack or you had to use some weird internal APIs. Um, but all of those things were um, eager. So they created the whole stack and if you just needed one or two frames, uh, that was not possible. So that is, that is really interesting. And one feature which is unfortunately just experimental um, is the HTTP2 client. I think that doesn't need any explanation. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing how Java 9's flagship feature, the module system, will do in the real world. I believe modularity is one of the most important architectural principles in software development, but it will take time for people to grasp and embrace modules. Strong encapsulation and explicit dependencies will change the way you approach coding and design. The one thing I'm really looking forward to are the additions to the API of optionals. One of my favorite is the contended locking optimization that I usually give talks on. 
But also there is the string density project, which has been in the works for a couple of years now. I think VAR handles are a very good new feature. Uh, VAR handles are basically exposing direct memory access uh, and um, low-level functionality uh, to Java uh, libraries. And until now, this was often uh, solved by using unsafe APIs, like some misc unsafe. And this is a very important step in the direction of uh, exposing this feature in a, on a standardized manner. I have two features that I particularly like in JDK9. Both of them are actually very small. The first one isn't really even part of the Java language, the libraries, or the Java virtual machine. What it is, is the fact we now have searchable documentation. You go to the Java docs, and if you need something like String Builder or something like that, you don't have to scroll all the way down to String Builder, you can just type it into the search bar. And that, I find, is unbelievably useful. How it's taken us 22 years to get to that, I don't quite know. The other feature that I particularly like, and I I noticed this the other day when I wanted to use it, and it wasn't there in JDK 8, was, or is the effectively final variables being used in a try with resources block. So now you can use a variable that's outside of the try with resources block without having to assign it to a new variable name. And I find that could be very useful as well. Wow, people really like collection factories. Is it your favorite too? Let me know in the poll. We all know that Java 9 brings more than just new toys to play with though. Many projects require some cleanup to properly function on the new release. And I wanted to know from my guests whether their projects are impacted too. So how's Java 9 going to affect JRebel? Uh, well, one of the key parts of Java 9 is the Jigsaw module system. And uh, those of you who are familiar with JRebel, it's a, it's a tool that allows Java classes and resources to be reloaded. Now, it, before Java 9, a lot of that is going to be done with, well, pretty much all going to be done with class paths and class loaders. Uh, it's pretty much JRebel's bread and butter. But with Java 9, we're introducing an entire new module system uh, with, uh, you know, a, a module path which is going to be determined by each each module. The scope is going to be determined by each module. Um, so depending on what's visible. Uh, to other modules will be determined by the module module info.java. So we need to understand the module info.java. We need to be able to reload the module info.java as well as classes that are on the module path. So Java 9 will have a, a relatively small impact on our on our projects, mostly because we're probably going to need to stick with Java 8 for the, for the short term. Uh, but we will be looking to add module info um, to our uh, open source projects. Um, just, just if people want to use them on Java 9, it's uh, best to have module info there if we can. Impact on JLint 5. Um, integrating Java 9 modules into the process of finding test classes in all your module projects is an ongoing task. We are still exploring the best way to handle it. I have already tried out Java 9 on a small microservices application that I wrote a little while ago. I found that Jigsaw was really useful for servicing some of the design concerns that I don't normally think about that much in terms of obviously modularity, encapsulation, which bits of the code I want to expose and which bits I want to hide. I found that overall it made my code cleaner and better designed. I think the, the biggest part uh, will be the modularization. Um, so we need to make sure that uh, Hazelcast works flawlessly with, with Java 9 and, and the module system activated. My current project is OSGI based and I fully expect it to remain that way, even with the Java 9 module system in place. Getting the application to run on the Java 9 class path involves teasing out some problems with libraries that don't play by the rules and abuse JDK internals. I expect this to be an exercise that many people will go through after Java 9's release. Actually, it was one of my tasks, and not my favorite task, to check what happens if people try Spring Data with Java 9. And the fun part is um, there were like two things that broke due to the um, module system in Spring Data itself. Um, we fixed that, so we are fine. For now, I don't think it's going to be a big impact. The latest changes with allowing um, access of illegal access, for example, don't really um, break anything anymore. Um, we're on the path to moving features over and mostly updating libraries because it's where the breakage happens most of the time. So, so our code is not affected that much since we're not using many yeah, un unstandardized features in our code. For Eclipse projects, the impact of Java 9 has been happening for a while. Our compiler team has to implement based on a specification 
not on the implementation in OpenJDK. So they've been working with Mark Reinhold's team to clarify aspects of the spec. The Eclipse Java development team has put a considerable amount of effort into updates to the Eclipse compiler for Java to support Java 9. ECJ is an independent and fully open source implementation of the Java compiler. Of course, these compiler updates feed into the Eclipse IDE support for Java 9, updates to the web tools support, and a lot more. As we move forward, our projects that produce libraries like Eclipse Collections or Eclipse Link are going to have to decide whether or not they'll provide their code as proper modules. I'm looking forward to the first release of the new Eclipse Open J9 project, which implements a JVM for the Java language that supports Java 9. Well, I have to say that for me personally, we don't really have a project that we work on. We develop JVMs. So from our point of view at Azul, JDK 9 means that we release a new version of Zulu based on the Open JDK source code, and we will release a new version of Zing our commercial JVM with low latency garbage collection and a faster JIT compiler and we'll do that for JDK9 as JDK9 as well fairly shortly. Well that doesn't sound too bad. Maybe it will go smoother than we expected. But does this hold for the entire ecosystem? What do you think how it will be impacted? So I think Java 9 is going to, uh, it will change the ecosystem and the, the wider Java community in two ways. Uh, the first way is I think it's the first step into a new kind of Java realm. First of all, the module system will be uh, will be at the very centre of us being able to you know change things faster in uh, Java in the future. So that that's the first thing. It's not quite there yet, but it's the first step certainly. Uh, the second thing I think how it's going to change the Java ecosystem is every library, tool, framework, app server, everyone is going to need to uh, make sure they support applications that want to use the module system, whether that's turning their libraries, frameworks, tools uh, into kind of automatic modules that can that can be used by an application, or whether they choose to go full the full duration and, and modularize themselves with module info dot classes and and uh, you know, change them, turn themselves into named named modules. That's entirely up to them. But the entire Java community is going to need to, to need to step up and and make sure they support Java nine for sure. So I think there's no doubt that Java nine will cause some problems in the wider community. It's you know, it's a major release. It introduces a big new feature, and fundamentally, it's the hacks that we've all been using for the past twenty years. Many of these hacks are going to be closed off. Now, this is good for the long term but will undoubtedly cause us some pain in the short term. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's not easy to answer. The module system packs a lot of migration features. So in theory, it should be possible for the entire community, for the entire ecosystem, to modularize incrementally every project at their own pace. But that's kind of like an ideal, and it's not, it's not quite obvious whether that works exactly like that. So what I'm sure that there will not be a schism like between Python 2 and 3, um, between Java 8 and Java 9, it's not impossible that there will be more reservations to updating to Java 9 than there were when updating to Java 8. In terms of the wider community, Jigsaw has the potential to have quite a big impact on the way that we develop libraries, the way that we consume other code. Um, so I'm really interested to see what's going to happen there. As it is, I'm not really sure exactly how quickly this is going to be adopted, but I think it's going to be very interesting. With the release of Java 9, the ball is now in the court of the Java community. Do we value modular software development? I especially want to encourage library maintainers to adopt the module system, so we, as application developers, can all benefit in the long run. Uh, it took years and years for just uh, the API, the JRE, to get optimized, right? Uh, to get modular. So I don't see many people jumping in and mo uh, modularizing their current applications. But I see the long-term benefit is that modularity is is going to open up um, the understanding as well as the dependencies um, uh, and and correlations and between the libraries and everything. So it's going to benefit the entire ecosystem in the long run. Uh, on the long term, I hope that modul modularity is, is basically accepted as a general concept and that more and more libraries um, migrate to it. But I also think that a lot of libraries will die off over time because uh, many libraries aren't really maintained anymore. They're still used today because they can be used today, but um, I think those libraries that don't have much support anymore will just uh, disappear. Maybe that's a good thing as well, such that new 
new libraries can grow in this context. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens there. I'm not all that sure what sort of direct impact the Java 9 itself will have on the wider Java community. I am curious to see what sort of real adoption we'll see by that community. Regardless, the cleanup work that came before Java 9 to untangle the core libraries, to make modularization even possible, was necessary work that in itself extends the life of Java. It'll certainly be interesting to see what uh, the wider community decides to do with modules, who will, for example, offer their code in module form. Time will tell. I think JDK 9 is going to have a big impact, and the biggest thing is making sure that people's code runs on JDK 9 because of the encapsulation of the various non-public APIs in the JDK and the impact that has, especially when you're using frameworks or third-party libraries, which are using things like some miscon safe and you might not be aware of that. Obviously there are command line options which will enable you to make that transition easier but it is going to have quite a big impact as people make that move to using JDK 9 and ensuring that their code runs on that without any problems. The other thing I'd mention is that there's a lot of command line options, the minus XX ones that have changed between JDK 8 and JDK 9 and that's something that people will have to adjust to as well. Sounds like the community needs to step up its game and really learn about modularity and compatibility challenges. Any good sources you could recommend? I'd give you an option of two, two books uh, around Java modularity and Jigsaw. Uh, the first by Nikolai Parlock, uh, The Java Module System, uh, a book by Manning. Uh, the second one is actually one that I reviewed myself, so I'm, I'm, I know it's a great book. Uh, it's called the Java 9, it's called Java 9 Modularity, it's an O'Reilly book. Uh, and that's by Paul Backer and uh, Sander Mack. So both, I'm sure, are going to be good books. Uh, and I think everyone, every developer, really needs to um, learn and understand what's coming in Java 9 uh, and beyond uh, with the module system and the module path. It's, go it's going to be something which is going to affect us all um, and something which I think it's important for all developers to understand. So one thing you can look for on Java 9 is my blog on module names and what exactly a module is, how it differs from an artifact. You know what I'm going to say, right? Get the book! Get the book! You should definitely check out my Real World Java 9 presentation. In it, I try to give a live demo of the sorts of features in Java 9 that we're actually going to use. Obviously, I'd like you all to read my book Java 9 Modularity, which was recently completed and released by O'Reilly. As an organizer of Java 9, I of course have to mention our videos that we put out right after the conference. Uh, it's very up-to-date talks about new things that come out. If you're curious to see what it's taken to implement support for Java 9, including an independent open source implementation of the compiler, check out wiki.eclipse.org slash uppercase J Java 9. I'm going to play my own trumpet here and I'm going to say that there's, there's several things I've done which I think are quite useful. Um, you can find on YouTube I've done a presentation called 55 New Features in JDK 9 at a number of conferences and more recently I've written a couple of blog entries which people will probably find it useful. One of which relates back to the answer to the previous question which is where I've looked at the changes in terms of command lines. In fact, I did a whole blog on all the incompatible changes between JDK 8 and JDK 9. I think people would probably find that very useful. Oh, you're back already. Let me just put this somewhere. To wrap it up, I asked my guests whether they wanted to thank the JDK team, and oh boy did they. So this is for all you JDK engineers out there, so you can bask in the well-earned glory of your hard work. And I think Mark Reinhold did a lot of good work in, um, in, in you know, heeding the advice of the ecosystem and, and working to make sure that Java 9 was, uh, was in, in, the, in a, a better state for adoption by the ecosystem. Big thanks to the JDK team who've worked very hard on the Java 9 release. Uh, modules is a tricky problem and uh, we've come up with a solution, I think, in the end that, that while hard in the short term, will work us through. Mark Reinhold, Adam Bateman, Alex Buckley. As I see it, those three have been the first line of the module system efforts. But I'm sure they've not been the only ones, right? So I want to thank all the unsung heroes who've done work in the background, uh, who I'm sure have participated a lot to make the module system, after almost 10 years, finally come to the Java ecosystem in Java 9. Thank you so much. I want to thank the whole JDK team for all their hard work on this release. 
It's taken a while to get out, but it must have been so hard to work on it. And they've been really responsive to any questions that we have, any feedback from the community. Um, they've taken the time to listen to us and to make changes to the language, which will actually, which will actually help. I think this is fantastic. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I definitely have to thank Mark Reynolds for um, for taking me not too bad with all my opinions. Um, so I think that is sometimes not not easy. Uh, I guess the other way around as well. So um, he did a great job. Um, the module system is is a big step for the JDK itself. Um, it was a necessary step. So um, and obviously all of the other guys that worked on Java Nine, uh, Brian Gutz, John Rose. Um, I don't think you can you can single out some some very specific person. I'd like to thank Alex Buckley and Alan Bateman from the JDK team. Both are key players in the implementation of the module system in Java 9, but they have also graciously taken time to serve as technical reviewers for the Java 9 modularity book. Thanks, guys. I was a part of the uh, performance team, uh, the JDK performance team, so I would like to thank everybody in the performance team for, for, uh, for doing a great job with Java 9 release. Uh, Vladimir Kozlov from the compiler team for AOT work that he's done, and so many others, uh, all the developers. Thank you very much. Um, really appreciate all your hard work. Yeah, I think I want to thank Mark Reinhold. He really held out there. Uh, he got a lot of criticism, maybe partly deserved, but uh, also undeserved often. And uh, he really pushed through and took into consideration what people were concerned about. I think he really did a good job there. And um, you can thank him for, for getting this, this job done. Jigsaw was a hard project. Yeah, I think that there's, there's a lot of people who've been involved in JDK9, and it's, it's probably wrong to single out one particular person. But in this case, I think one particular person does need to be singled out, and that's Mark Reinhold. You have to give him credit for sticking with it for so long and finally getting modularity done, finally getting modularity into the JDK. So I, I take my hat off to Mark and his perseverance for getting this actually through and finally out into the wild. So many kind words got me all cheered up. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks again to the awesome people who took part in this video. Make sure to follow them on Twitter or check out their links, which I put into the description box. And if you want to see more videos about software development, the JVM and Java, make sure to subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, where I'm at NipaFX. So long. Welcome Java 9. It's a pleasure to finally get you. Java 9, here we go. Herzlich willkommen Java 9. I, for one, welcome our Java 9 overlords. Finally, Java 9 is here. I'm looking forward to 1903. <laughs> hey there, Java 9. I think we've waited long enough now. And good luck with the jigsaw. About time, Java 9. Welcome, Java 9. Welcome, JDK 9. Ah. 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 Fuck. <laughs>